really enjoyed the movie. I really, I was going to start with you because when I left uh, the screening, I felt confident that Marguerite's take was the truthful one. And I left feeling that the final chapter was intended to tell the viewer that her reality was the reality. But then I overheard a conversation behind me from two people who had seen it, asking which of the three stories they believed. And I got a text later that night from my friend who was also in there asking did I, which of the characters I believed. And that sort of surprised me. Does that surprise you? And are you quite pleased? It's I'm bloody you? amazed. How stupid mm. can they be? Sorry. I mean, are you joking? Okay, so that is that a good answer? Yes. No, I, that I is don't understand. <laughs> oh, I was going to but are you pleased it's kind of sparking that conversation, even if you think it's stupid? No, I think there should be absolutely no doubt with the honesty of how Lady Carouge is and who she is. And don't forget, when you watch the film, whether there's an audience to her innermost self or not, we are seeing who she is. Mm. You've got to pay attention to who she is to know whether it's true or not, mm. right? So yeah. when she's in a room with the mother, with the maid, in the paddock, you, you see her private, her private person, who she is. Mm. That should tell you who is telling the truth. Also, can we just talk about like the fact that like her life was at stake? And she spoke up in this time and everything that was she was up against to speak this truth. And people are still like, do you it, think it she was telling the truth takes you 28 minutes though? to die when you're being burning. Who are the morons behind you? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I was quite surprised. But the fact that I overheard people asking, I just Sorry, assumed yeah. I was really stupid, read yeah. into it in a different way. But um, Jody, I was going <laughs> to ask, I mean, obviously, I was interested to see there was three writers on this. I mean, considering... Mm. The film is split into three parts and the writing team consists of two men and a woman and the three parts are kind of two male perspectives and then one females. Um, but how important was it for you that there was a female voice in this screenplay, given the nature of the, the story being told? Absolutely. You know, I think there is something to be said for a, the female sensibility and a woman understanding a woman's experience and especially in regards to something, you know, as kind of traumatic and, and sensitive as this, to be able to work really closely with Nicole and really delve into that and um, and really try and figure out who this woman was, you know. We had some information, but not an awful lot of it, so there was a great freedom in that. Um, you know, and me and Nicole and I had a really good relationship and got on very well, so those conversations were always kind of encouraged and, and welcomed, which was um, which was really lovely to be a part of coming into the process. Yeah. And Ridley, because I mean, the whole, I mean, the concept of this is kind of mad in a sense that this idea of this duel to the death and whoever dies has proven themselves to be the gu guilty party and the trial because they lost the duel in the eyes of God. And one of the things I found most striking about this film is how pertinent it is because the themes are so relevant. But conversely, I was struck by how mad some people were back then. From your deviation into the kind of periods of as a director and as a storyteller, what shocks you most about what people were like back then? Well, you know, if you go back to the Roman Empire, we forget they drank for centuries out of lead pipes and lead tanks. So that may me mean that a lot of those crazy motherfuckers who are the emperors of Rome were, ha had Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. So and then you go to food, diet of the period and the time. Now, um, Henry VIII died of malnutrition because he was so large, he was only eating... Uh, hang, hung meat, so eating rotting meat. So you look at how people lived and how did that affect them. I mean, I lived in a house which I had in Surrey, which was 1360, which actually, funny enough, is the same date as the film. And so, and I lived in the house for two years. It really got to me because it was like living in the hold of a galleon. It became very depressing. And so we got rid of it. But I think you know, the life and times <clears throat> of those particular times would be much simpler than ours. If you had money, then you are clearly very privileged. If you didn't, then you are very much underclass. So there's always that to balance out. Brilliant. Well, I could have gone on for ages, but unfortunately, that's all I've got time for. But thank you so much. Best of thank luck you. with the release of the movie. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys.